Okay, it's uh, Emmy time now. Voting is still going on right now, and I am with Lynette Rice from Entertainment Weekly and the great Ken Tucker from Yahoo. And we're going to just take oh, these... Oh, he gets a great, and I don't get a great. He's the Didn't great I give you a great? Oh, uh, uh, no. double great, double great. <laughs> <laughs> for Lynette. Uh, but I got to get, maybe you're not so great. I don't know. How come you don't have Downton Abbey in your top six or seven for drama series, right? Uh, you know, I still believe in uh, judging a show by its season, not by its overall performance. Ken, Ken, Ken. And so <laughs> I was. I was underwhelmed by the season. I mean, it was sweet, it was perfectly wrapped up in a bow, like big time. But I didn't think it was like out of the box, you know, performances. So yeah, no, I am. I especially considering what else is out there, I'm so not like seeing a nomination for it. Uh, okay, well, first of all, Ken, before before you start, Lynette's <laughs> predictions are House of Cards to win, uh, Mr. Robot, Game of Thrones, Homeland, The Americans, Orange is the New Black, and Saw. And Ken, you've got Game of Thrones, Mr. Robot, in second position, Downton Abbey in third. I think you're onto something here. House of Cards, uh, Better Call Saul, The Americans, and Homeland. So let's keep this going on on uh, down. Yeah, I mean, never underestimate the sentimental feelings of voters toward Game of Thrones. And if <laughs> I if I rooted or voted or nominated only shows that I thought had good seasons, my predictions would be practically useless. <laughs> this is true. Uh, so, you know, while I'm hoping this is a kind of uh, Mr. Robot Game of Thrones kind of year for drama, I, you know, you can't count out stuff like, like Downton Abbey. So I think you're crazy too, Lynette. I think Downton's in there. It's been nominated four times in a row. Remember, it won Best Miniseries that first year. But you've got House of Cards as your number one. And I, and I like that pick, personally. Uh, what's your thinking? Well, gosh... I, maybe I should like adjust number one-ish. Um, <laughs> She's whipping out on us, Ken. <laughs> I know. I still believe it should be there. Um, um, I, you know, this is. It's funny because I, I, I especially see chatter among some critics on on social media that they were a little underwhelmed by the season and that it got a little sharp jumpy, especially with you know her becoming um, a, a VP nominee, which I under, I agree, that was a little crazy at first, but I totally went with it. Uh, uh, but, you know, and now I completely erase what I said previously about judging a show in its entirety, uh, because this is a show I'm currently judging on its entirety, and I and I feel like it's it's been underappreciated by Emmy, and God damn it, it's time. So uh, that's I why that. I put I it on there. That. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Ken? House of Cards? House, House of Cards? Of, yeah. Uh, I mean, I thought it had very strong uh, acting performances, but I thought it had was so flawed in terms of its storytelling. Uh, it was so kind of lumpy in its narrative pace that um, I, I really don't think that it merits a, any, any kind of higher placement in my judgment anyway. Well, we're talking about Emmy voters here. What, can I first uh, lecture both of you to stop talking about TV quality? It has nothing to do with what we're here for. I know, you're right. This is what the Emmys like, and I, uh, I disagree with what you say about House of Cards in terms of quality. Personally, I like this season, not that I'm a TV critic or not. But here's what it's got going for, and that is it's, um, uh, it's West Wing with antiheroes, right? And they loved West Wing. They kept their snobs at the Emmys. Uh, they... They keep voting for all this, you know, this upper class stuff. That's why Veep won last year for comedy series. And so I think House of Cards is in the mix. What what puzzles me is is what happened to it last year at the Emmys, where it was up for series, but it didn't get nominated for writing or directing. It was very very bizarre. Um, but let's switch now to Mr. Robot. This is the hot new shiny toy in the game, and it is exciting. It certainly deserves to win. Uh, but it's sci-fi, and then they might go, well, on the other hand, sci-fi fantasy can't win, but Game of Thrones, with all those dragons, won last year. It defied the curse against that. So who wants to jump in here? Mr. Robot, what are its chances? Oh, I think its chances are pretty good in the sense that, um, it, it, yes, it is a new shiny toy. Yes, it is in that kind of uh, sci-fi fantasy genre, but it's a very human story. It's got a lot of stuff about family, and, and, and I, I think it... It, it, when you combine both 
the hype up behind it and the quality behind it, and I know I'm not supposed to be account counting quality now that I've been scolded about that, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it has a kind of momentum that it's, it's, it's in the air. I would also jump back and ask Tom why then, if, you, if the, the rationale you have for House of Cards would seem to argue also for the Americans, um, because that's a very highly esteemed, classy show that, that voters ought to be rooting for, and it never wins anything. That's because you're rooting for the enemy to beat us. Um, uh, the, 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 the problem with that show, in terms of its enemy positioning, is that, is that winning awards is all about the rooting factor. And uh, you, it's hard to root in that show for you know, a country that's trying to take down the United States. That said, I think that the terrain has changed this year uh, enough that it can get in. And it's in my seven uh, slots for predictions because I think the outcry has gathered over just so much volume over the last few years that to get this show in there. Mad Men is gone this year. Or just the new black, I think, is vulnerable. Can neither you nor I have it in our drama series predictions? Uh, Lynette does, but I think that there are some openings here, so the Americans could get in. Lynette, pipe in. Um, uh, you know, okay. So now I'm completely channeling maybe the typical um, Emmy voter who hasn't gotten around to seeing everything. I put the Americans and Mr. Robot on, and I haven't watched either of them. But I, um, um, but I know that, especially at nomination time, as you've, I think, I think you've admitted this before. In many respects, the nomination process is a popularity contest, mm -hmm. and I think because of all the buzz with Mr. Robot, it's going to get there. I don't think it's going to win. Um, I think it's, they're just going to be happy to be there. Um, the Americans, I think that's another example, is that you know we've all been talking about it so much. So I think you know the typical you know ballot checker offer is going to say, "Gosh, everybody's talking about this. I should throw that in too." And that's probably why I threw it in as well. To be perfectly clear. Yeah, to, just to clarify too how the voting process works here is, uh, I forget how many dramas there are on the ballot, let's say there are 80 or 90. Uh, the voter checks off 10. Now they don't rank them, they just get uh, 10 votes. Um, and now I'm an Emmy voter for the first time this year, I actually joined the Academy and just filled in my ballot the other day. And it's just you're checking off, off the uh, 10 that you want. And so uh, even though seven will be the number for the nominations, they ask you for ten, and that's how they how they do all this. Um, all right, so Ken, Game of Thrones, you and I say it will win. Where do you stand, uh, Lynette? Have we talked you out of House of Cards? If so, we think it's going to win here. For the win. Uh, you know, so Game of Thrones, are, are they voting on last season's Walk of Shame year? Um, you know, when uh, Cersei did the Walk of Shame, is that, would it be for that year? Is it the current, it's not the current season they're turning in, are they? I'm, I, God, I get so bad. Yeah, the, the eligibility period cut off is May 31st. Okay, so it's this current season, May 31st. Um, oh, gosh. Um, Don't judge it by season, just judge it by, here's, keep in mind, the Emmys are like TV, they, they're, they love repeats, right? So the, the problem I think we face this year is across the board, Veep and Julia Lee Dreyfus and Game of Thrones and the rest of it, there's a new voting system this year. Let's talk about that. And it is a, they basically extended the popular vote to the second round where it used to be a case of where the uh, 2,000 members of the Academy on the acting branch, they would all vote for the nominees. But then it would get down to these little panels of uh, basically 50 to 70 people who would volunteer to watch a sample episode of each nominee in the acting slots and then pick a winner. And usually the strongest episode won, so that usually meant there were all these bizarre but often well-deserved upsets at the Emmys. In the program category that we're talking about now for drama series, it's always been more open, but it was generally only six or seven hundred people instead of 18,000 people picking the winner. So, um, with 18,000 people picking it last year to win, I think Game of Thrones, we're just going to see a repeat of this popular tie, especially since it's so popular right now. I think it's between uh, Game of Thrones and House of Cards. I just, I can't see Better Call Saul. I think Orange is the New Black. I, I, no, I, I'm not seeing it, and I, I, and, I, and I don't think Homeland either. I really do think it's between House of Cards and Game of Thrones. For the win, yeah. Yes. What does Ken think? I think it's Game of Thrones. It's uh, yeah. Really? 
Yeah, I think it, it's almost inevitable. Mm, I agree. Uh, moving to best drama actor, and this is interesting. We we have a couple open slots here. We don't have John Hamm coming back or Jeff Daniels, so that opens up the slots. We will have Kevin Spacey coming back again, of course. We'll have Bob Odenkirk come back, and we'll have uh, who am I forgetting? Setting a couple of slots. Uh, you've got, we've all got Spacey for the win. He's never won an Emmy. Uh, Lynette, to you. Are we uh, crazy here? I don't think we're crazy because I also think he's one of those guys, I mean, for those snobs that you speak so highly of, I think he fits into that mold. Um, you know, he's he's still a film actor. He made this effortless transition to this show. And I just think he's phenomenal. He, he is the perfect anti-hero. Uh, and I love watching him. I can't see him enough. I, I, I Yes, I would love to see him win. Yeah, Ken, last year it was like we, it was John Hamm was overdue, so they had to give it to him. The year before, I think it wasn't the Brian Cranston that won. They could not give it to him in the final season of uh, Breaking Bad. So I think there, there are reasons to explain away Kevin not winning in the past, right? And not this year, then he has to do it. Yeah, and I, I think that he has a very, very strong chance of winning this year. And like I said, I think the performances were stronger than the show itself this year. Um, the only thing I would say is I, I, we have to look out for the dark horse of Paul Giamatti in Billions, because I, I, I think that it, to a certain extent, um, again, he falls into that category as a highly esteemed both film and small screen actor and in a show that's perceived as classy. That could happen, yeah. Um, Rami Malek, um, any chance that he could win, you guys? Well, I whenever I see, I wear, it would be sweet, wouldn't it? I mean, whenever I see like a like a potential like that, I mean, I think back to when Michael Chiklis won for the Shield, um, and it's nice to see, you know, the um, the underdog come in and win. I, um, if he won it, I don't think anyone would be pissed off, Ken. I mean, would don't you agree? I mean, I I think they would be pretty happy. Oh no! Quite the opposite. I think of all everybody who's nominated, he deserves it the most. I thought it was an extraordinary performance, especially the freshman year of a show. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's really uh, it, it, that would be a wonderful upset. The camera, if you had the camera focus on Kevin's face when Rami wins, that would be pretty bitching. <laughs> Oh yeah, Kevin, Kevin finally won the Golden Globe this year. Remember, he hit number one, and so uh, he, he may be on a, a kudos roll here. But look, some people think that it's uh, it is Odenkirk could actually win. We have a lot of our experts at Gold Derby saying, "I could see that happening." Couldn't you guys? Or no? I, I think it's a long shot. Really, uh, I you know I think that when you when you're up, I I think even. Uh, Bobby Cannavale, in a, in a certain sense, uh, even though show's just been canceled, uh, and uh, he, he's the kind of actor they give awards to. Yeah, they gave it to him in the guest category recently. Yeah. Uh, Lynette, you and I are Outlander fans, and we both have Sam Hewen in there. Is this just wishful thinking for you and me, or what? Are you really gonna get I think it's a little wishful thinking. I see a, a little smi a smile on, Kev on Ken's face, and I'm trying to ignore that little corner of the screen. <laughs> but but I, um, uh, I, I also think about, oh, quit shaking your head. Just sit and listen. Listen and learn, my love. I, I'm thinking about his trajectory from the very beginning to where he ends up at the end of season two, I've watched all the way through 13, and in, in the books, the, Diana Gabaldon writes about Jamie becoming this king of men, and by the 13th episode of the second season, and this isn't my loins talking, people, this is me, Rico. I am totally appreciating the fact of where he's come, and he truly has become this king of men. I, I think he's done an incredible job. But I think... Uh, uh the beefcake issue does hurt him, though. I think he's really deserving to get a nomination. Yes, and, right. And, he's, and I did finally catch up with the final episode uh, two nights ago. Uh, Lynette, last time you and I talked, I hadn't seen it. it was, it's magnificent. He really emerges as the king of men, yes, here. But, look, he wasn't nominated at the Golden Globes where, where the show was nominated, where Katrina was nominated, and Tobias. So they had slighted him, of all people. I think that tells us how vulnerable he is here when you're up against all these kind of highbrow esteemed actors. So, Ken, all right, now let us have it. 
So wait a minute. Just, before I get to point out that you know the beefcake thing didn't slow down Bob Odenkirk. Look at he's still a big pick. He's a hottie. <laughs> oh, there you go. Absolutely. All right, go ahead. Oh, uh, um, I'm sorry. What did you want me so, to comment? So we're, we're opening the, the the pathway to ridicule Lynette and I over our Sam Ewan prediction. Right. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Katrina, so, you know, it's uh, I can see the charm of that show, uh, and even by saying charm, I'm being condescending, so... I know, uh, you sound like you're would, talking about a Disney Channel show. And I think we ought to have a uh, loin cam, so that we can actually see when we are speaking from our loins on these films. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Ken, you've got Matthew Reese in there. He's not gotten in yet, but he's had a really great year. And I think from the Americans, his, his character is very, very kind of psychologically conflicted, uh, much more so than Kerry Russell, his co-star. So I agree that if one of the American stars gets in, it's him. But he hasn't gotten in, so why do you have the confidence this year that he will? It, just sheer wishful thinking, really. I mean, and 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 a kind of momentum that maybe this year, after being ignored in previous years, but I just think he was so terrific this season. And as you say, especially toward the end of the season, that character became so much more uh, uh, divided and 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 complex, and just the the inner turmoil that he's able to communicate with a completely deadpan. I have to be. Uh, uh, a spy in the midst of everyone around me, I just think is extraordinary. Linda, speaking of wishful thinking, come on, your other two predictions, are they real? Andrew Lincoln <laughs> and Clive Owen. Owen. Okay, okay so. in, com in complete contrast, this is my, the, my loins are talking right here. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot get me enough of Clive Owen. Uh, but the, the reason, I mean, Andrew was more of a, um, he's been doing it for so long, uh, kind of thing. And Clive, I think he's one of those two for those Emmy snobs who love the whole film actor making the transition to the small screen. So that's why I threw a bone in that regard. And that's it. Okay. I've got no other excuse. Uh, Kyle, you know, Kyle Chandler could get in. Speaking of other people that we haven't mentioned here, he got nominated last year for Bloodline. I think he's in the mix. Uh, who else did we forget? It doesn't look like anyone's picked him, though. I can't see anybody. Oh, wait. Um, people, Rotten Tomatoes, Daily News, um, they picked up BuzzFeed. Two of those guys, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, all three of us, though, if, if we're thinking here, let's stick with Outlander. All three of us have Katrina. And to those of you who are watching this who don't know who Katrina Balfa is, shame on you because Outlander is a, is a great piece of puff pastry TV. It's rich in melodrama, romance, um, the Scottish Highlands and, 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 and Versailles in the 18th century. And Katrina Poff is a former uh, model, runway model turned actress, and she's luminous on screen. She's absolutely captivating. This is a show that has an international cult hit following. All three of us here in this webcam can tell you that all we have to do to generate traffic when we write an article is put the word Outlander in a headline. And boom, the uh, traffic explodes. And there's a reason for it, isn't it? Uh, let's, let's Ken, start with you. This woman is magnetic. She really is. I mean, I got to say, I, I kind of came into this show through the back door of my wife saying, you've got to watch more of this beyond the first two episodes that you reviewed, you idiot. Uh, and uh, I've stayed to get completely hooked. And I just, I think her performance is, as you said, just... Uh, not just ju just luminous, uh, but uh, it's got real, real substance to it. And, and I think that she plays all kinds of gradations of character uh, magnificently. And, um, and it's just, as you say, it, it's got that combination of being a terrific romantic soap opera and, and also featuring some really, really good performances. But Lynette, are they watching Stars Network? Are the TV Academy members watching? Um, I think this is going to be definitely a case where um, uh, the uh, the buzz around the show is going to help tremendously. In fact, uh, right now, all the Outlander fans are tweeting uh, wildly about uh, to try to get uh, more energy, you know, for the, the the voting. Because I remember even going into the first season, there was just no one talking about the show, despite the fact that it was based on very popular books. But what I like about Claire, uh, excuse me, you know, Katrina, 
um, is that you know there, as with any you know uh, fan who reads the books voraciously, you know they, they had they were really skeptical about whether you know Ronald Moore and his team could find great actors who match what they read in the books. And they just glommed on to Katrina and to Sam Hewen instantly. And then now, when you look at her, it's like, of course, she's Claire. And, and even book Claire, she's more buxom. She's brick more. She's built more like a brick shit house. Um, you know, Katrina. I mean, like you said, she was a lingerie model. Uh, but I mean, she now you just look at her like, of course, she's Claire. And I think that's even part of her appeal too. Uh, it's great. I'm listening to the third book of the series on audio, and and I just now see Katrina in my head, and it's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. Well, she's had two outstanding episodes too. There's one episode called Faith, where yeah. she loses her baby girl daughter and sings to it in her arms. It's already aired, and she has uh, told us that that will be her end the episode submission if she's nominated. But I just saw the finale. That would be a damn good submission. Too. Isn't it awesome? Uh, it ages so well in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the great hours of TV, period. Uh, or hour and a half, whatever it is. Yeah. Both of you guys had Robin Wright out front for House of Cards to win. And, and Robin's never won. She won the Golden Globe that first year. And I could see this happening. Ken, uh, what's your reasoning here for picking her to win? I think that her character took center stage so forcefully this season that it was a real showcase for her. Um, I thought it was one of the plot lines of the season that really, really worked. Um, I, I, the way she interacted not just with Kevin Spacey but with you know, just all the other uh, main characters, uh, um, I, I thought it was a, just a terrific performance and I could see it really being recognized as such. Uh, but Lynette, Viola Davis won last year, you know, past Oscar nominee. Uh, you've got Viola. You don't even have Viola on your list. You're I don't have Viola. Yet. And, you know, yeah. to be fair, too, these picks, I mean, I went with these just by who I thought was going to get nominated. This, I, I, If you want me to, I'll go back and say, then beyond that, who I think is going to win. But I, I feel like it's, at this point, it's hard to, like, I don't, I don't know if I want to say right now. But regardless... Yes, I think it's Robin Wright's to lose. I, you know, like I said before, that it was it was kind of a preposterous season uh, with where the story went, and yet she sold it, um, and it was awesome. And oh my God, I want to see her at that microphone, and I want to see what she says. I want to hear what she says. Uh, I think it'd be great, and I want to see what she's going to wear too. I think she'll look awesome. <laughs> she is very statuesque. Yes, uh, yes. Viola. Of course, last year became the very first African American ever to win Best Drama Actress at the and it means it was the last of the top categories that had never been broken by a person of color. But the show itself doesn't get nominations in other categories. It doesn't have that cross support. So I revile this my prediction for right now, but I don't know. You know Claire Danes it was a kooky of season. The season was kooky. It was just like woof, woof. Yeah, yeah, I'm not seeing that. Yeah. I, I didn't see it. Well, we, we have a couple of openings here. We go, you know, Elizabeth Moss was nominated last year. She's not coming back. Let's talk about uh, Julietta Margulies. You both have her on your list. She wasn't nominated last year. She was the year before. She wasn't the year before. You know, she goes kind of, kind of in and out of this category. Well, let's, let's stick with you here. You've got uh, in her in third place. Or actually, your, your singers aren't ranked. But, uh, yeah, although third sounds pretty good to me. Okay. <clears throat> This is kind of a John Hamm thing for me too. That you know the show's over, um, and I not that obviously John didn't win before, but I think you know she she gets it, you know for the show's run. Um, I don't think she's going to win it. Um, it's I mean I, I actually would prefer to see Robin win it over her. If Juliana wins it, I mean I ain't going to be crying um, because I I did love the last season as well. Um, but she's won before. Uh, but I, I definitely think that she deserves a nomination. I mean, come on. She's going to be the, our, our last gal from broadcast TV for a long time. So let's make <laughs> it a true. good one. <laughs> Ken, and Ken, she's somebody who came on the radar <laughs> winning an Emmy for ER that first season. When she was just like a guest player. She's she's probably the most notable example in modern times of, of the Emmy making a superstar. And then, of course, she went on to win and lead for uh, The Good Wife. Yeah, I think the odd thing about The Good Wife is that there's not, uh, you mentioned uh, Mad Men. I don't think that there's a kind of residual, uh, oh, what a magnificent series The Good Wife was, and now it's come to an end kind of feeling about toward The Good Wife. And even, and even though I personally, it was my favorite network drama while it was on, 
Um, and, but I just don't have that kind of sense that they're out there in the industry that, that they think that this was a, a magnificent sh the legacy that ought to be uh, recognized by giving her an Emmy at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Taraji, what Ken said. Yeah. yeah. I agree with all that, too. Taraji uh, it, it was nominated last year, Henson, of course, for Empire. I think she'll be back. I agree with Ken on that. Uh, Vera Farmiga is on Lynette's list, and I, I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows of the year. And of course, um, it was brilliant how they bumped her off at the end of the year. My God, it was so great on Bates Motel. And then you've got Ruth Wilson down for The Affair. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a strong lineup, but I think you're right. I think it's Robin Wrights to lose and maybe Viola. Okay, stick around. We're going to do comedy in a second. Thanks for the uh, drama right now.